I have been to get involved though, which is really nice because I do remember that growing up at the academy. Um, you know, with me, my brother, and sister there, my parents being a part of the being a part of the PTG and helping out with different things, and it's really nice. Hey, and welcome to another episode of the SMA Audio Experience. This week's guest is none other than Arla Sigurlaki. She's an SMA alumni, and this week we get to talk to her about three things. Her fond memories as a student at SMA, her current roles and responsibilities, including new leadership opportunities in the parish on campus, And finally, we get to discuss with her how she's helping to drive programs to help people who come on campus, whether you're Catholic or not, have fun and talk about God at the same time. Enjoy the show. Hey, Mark. Yep, I'm here. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, you know, for those who don't know who you are, which is, I find it pretty hard to believe, but for those (laughs) who haven't met you yet in person or who have been touched by you know, all your, your wisdom, your, your caring, your empathy, and everything like that that you show to everybody. Uh, can you, you know, share with everyone a little bit about yourself and how you came about to uh, being involved with the parish and also with the academy? Yeah, oh, well, thank you for that. Um, I think if you haven't even met me, at least you would have heard of my last name. It's not very common, so it kind of stands out. Uh, but I did go to the academy. I graduated class of 99. And um, I am the youngest of three uh, with siblings who also went to the academy before me. Um, I think now that I look back, I believe my sister did graduate class of 1990 and my brother Mm -hmm. class of 94 uh, with you, Mark. Um, (laughs) So I believe my family has been at least a a part of uh, my family has been a part of the academy for at least 17 years. Um, And. I never planned on it, but somehow I find myself now back at the academy or at St. Michael's working at the parish. Um, I'm the youth and young adult coordinator uh, and also the confirmation coordinator. And so it's kind of crazy and it's also kind of cool that I find myself in the area where I grew up in and now, you know, kind of doing the same things um, that I looked up to the, the adults who did them. And now I'm just kind of back around and trying to, I guess, keep up that, keep up that, um, that legacy or just even the standards of what, uh, of what they did for me, you know, growing up. And so I kind of wanted to do the same. No, that's awesome. That's amazing. I was just in a conversation last week with, with Nathan, um, you know, who's oh, yeah. interviewed last week and, um, I know that that that's a common theme. It's it's very interesting, right? We most recently, I know you were very involved with it. We had the parish, the St. Michael Parish Fall Festival a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And what's very interesting, what I've been finding in these different discussions with with alumni who are you know, either um, you know very involved at their their current parish if they relocated, um, or if they're in like high school or college or they have their own family. One common theme I'm I'm coming across is. Just the, I guess, the involvement in, in the parish, no matter what ministry, right, that they're doing. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of mm-hmm. that where uh, that foundation that was built, you know, at the academy and also in conjunction with, you know, their mentors and that their and what goes on at home, right, their family. Um, you you hear a lot of of that, and that's that, that's what I kind of want to delve into a little bit in more detail to give, you know, the the listeners, um, whether you're a an existing listener or a new listener, you, hey, you might be looking at St. Michael Academy as a prospective you know, school for your child or your children coming up. Or if you're an alumni, we welcome you for, you know, for listening in to us because, like you said, obviously there's people who came before us, right? Those, those mentors, right. those teachers, those um, support staff members. And we want to also let them know, hey, we're grateful for the, the, the path that they've paved you know, before us as a sense of gratitude. So, no, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Like the first question I actually want to get started is someone, you know, one of your old classmates or someone you haven't run into in a, in a while, um, if they ran into you and they said, hey, what, what's your, if they just asked you right off the bat, what's one, you know, whether it be funny, serious or anything in between, what's one interesting, you know, academy memory that just comes to your mind right now? Wow. <laughs> if you ask like my friends now, they'll tell you I have a, I have a terrible memory. Well, some things will stick out to me, but um Okay, well, this is one that sticks out, and this goes way back, and it's not even a big, 
a big experience, but this is something that sticks very clearly in my mind. I, I don't remember how old I was. Um, I know you guys must have been in junior high because we were picking my brother, Sean, up from a dance. Mm -hmm. And I very distinctly remember uh, being carried by Mrs. Green. Yeah, I remember Mrs. Green carrying me. Um, and I, I knew who she was. I knew she was a teacher. And um, I think, uh, you know, she greeted my parents and she said hello to me and she picked me up. And I remember just, you know, Ms. Green holding me while we're waiting for Sean to, you know, get out of the dance. <laughs> and so oh, that's, that's, no, that that's cool. All, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's that crazy so because cool. Mrs. Green was my sister's sixth grade teacher, let's say back in, that could have been 1986 seven-ish when she was in sixth grade. She was mm -hmm. uh, my brother's and your sixth grade teacher. She was yeah. my sixth grade teacher. <laughs> and, you know, and she's still, she's still a part of the academy today. And so I think that's, that's something that's so, um, or she was such a, kind of like an institution there. And, you know, everyone who's been through academy pretty much knows Mrs. Green and, you know, her care and the love that she gives to her students. Yeah. Um, it really goes to show, I guess, the, the people who don't know uh, too much about the history of the academy is, you know, we we do value, um, you know, the, those stories, and we have, you know, really great people who have mm -hmm. really played an impact on many people, right? And that story, I think, has has a whole bunch of nuggets, right? Including, I mean, look, just to stand, the the test of time with Mr. Green being a sixth grade teacher to all three of us, right? Through three different yeah. you know, sizable generations, at least four to five years apart from each other, you know, at, at minimum. Um, it's, it's just amazing. So, no, that's that's very cool. Um, and, you know, one thing I'm always curious about is um, once they leave St. Michael's and they, they go into their teenage and their young adult and their adult years, especially the role that you play, you know, like what what is something that you feel, you know, even just being involved in the St. Michael community, right? Not, not just with school, but uh, what mm -hmm. things have, have you picked up or that you see where being on campus uh, can benefit or enrich young people? Um, well, I feel like a big thing, um, well, definitely that I've felt, and I, I hope that, you know, the youth feel as well, is that um, the Paris Academy, it feels very uh, home-like. And I, I think, one, because it, it was a home to me growing up, and it still is. And um, I always want to kind of, like, impress on the students is that they should they should feel comfortable and feel at home there. So, if ever um, if ever they have issues or if they have concerns, you know they should be able to to come to us, to come to me, or even to come to our priests or within the academy, be able to approach the teachers. And I know, you know, I know Ms. Johnson's always approachable in that sense, and just feel welcome to to share any issues or problems they have. Uh, but likewise, that since it is a home, you should be able to have some ownership and. Um, and take some involvement, you know, if you if you have ideas that you want to implement or you have um, you have issues that you want to fix, you know, we should all take take part in that, that, um, you know, Father Manny says very often, he's like, this is not my parish. He's like, this is your your parish. So you guys should be the ones, you know, getting involved. And, you know, the priests, they can't and they don't do everything. Likewise, um, you know, there's only so much that the principal, Ms. Johnson, or the teachers can do. So it's up to the parishioners, the parents of the academy, you know, to kind of like take part in everything to um, to really make it feel like a home and also to be at home and, you know, make yourself feel very comfortable and, you know, welcomed and warm at, at the academy and even just at St. Michael's in general. I couldn't echo that feeling uh, so much more. I know that the social media or the technology space just trying to bring bring that online over the last you know two you know two to two and a half years, we've had you know a whole host of of teams and uh, parents and individuals share share more of the academy and the parish story. I have been seeing some more uh, get involved though, which is really nice because I do remember that growing up at the academy, um, you know, with me, my brother and sister there, my parents being a part of the being a part of the PTG and helping out with different things, and it's really nice now. Um, as an adult and seeing parents do the same thing, such as at the fall festival, there were so many parent volunteers at the fall festival, which was great, you know, just even setting up or, or cleaning up or running the booths. So it's nice seeing that, um, kind of seeing that continue on. You know, this year or the last couple of years, you've actually, you've always been very involved on many par parish uh, and campus activities. 
Um, mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit more of some of the, the new obstacles that you overcame by being uh, even more involved in a leadership position with the planning and execution of the this year's fall festival? Uh, yeah. Um, in, in the past, I've, I've only been involved just as a, either a coordinator for the youth or the young adult. Um, the past, uh, I want to say it's about three or four years, um, I wanted to kind of put more games out there for the youth. And so that's why I got the confirmation students involved to help, you know, run all those games. And then now this year, um, I don't know who, what came over me, but there's just something inside of me that really wanted to um, take a larger role. Um, Luce Montemir, who's Nate's mom, actually, she's been the, the chairperson for the fall festival uh, the past nine years. Mm -hmm. And going to all of the meetings, you know, she's always saying, I'm not going to be doing this forever. We need someone to step up and we need other people to to take part in this. And so if you're if you're thinking about it or, you know, pray about it. And so um, so I told her, OK, you know, why don't we go ahead and give it a try? I'll, I'll shadow you. I'll I'll take on more responsibility. And so then I became um, kind of like a co-chairperson for the fall festival this year. And and although I knew it was going to be a, a big deal and a big undertaking, I, I did not under or I definitely underestimated still how much I was going to be doing. Um, I mm -hmm. knew the fall festival is such a big deal, but just all the, the planning it takes, you know, not just from the chairperson's perspective, but from everyone. Everyone takes such a large part in the fall festival. Uh, whether it be uh, the different organizations and the academy, you know, planning their booths, uh, the maintenance, they do so, so much. Um, you know, right. they construct the booths, they they construct, there's like a, we have a piping system, I don't know if you know, for all of the food booths, so that we have um, a washing station uh, behind all the booths so that everyone can wash their hands and it, it's, we're all um, in compliance and uh, sanitary. Um, we have the entertainment I think Nate spoke about, um, you know, he's MC, and right. there's a lot planning going in the entertainment and just all of the background work. So I have such a great, uh, a greater appreciation for, you know, what goes into, you know, that large event. I don't know. If, well, you must remember this because, you know, you are, you've been to way more fall festivals than me, probably. Um, <laughs> The, how the, well, not way more. You're not that much older than me. Um, the fall <laughs> festival used to be multiple days. Do you remember that? I do. I do. That was that. That was one of those things. Um, I remember very clearly, even back in the the late '80s, as as a young young kid, um, <laughs> where we would be getting out of mass because we'd have to alter serve, um, right. or you know whatever else we're doing. You know, obviously you have to go to go to Saturday afternoon or Sunday mass, but. The way that they even structured or adjusted mass schedules to account for the extra traffic because it would be like a, I mean, it would be a big, it would be like a circus was in town, right? It would be like yeah. Friday, Saturday, it, Sunday. Um, they would theme days. Like we have, you know, like a crazy amount of vendors and food. And it, I mean, literally, you know, you would think it was Barnum and Bailey Circus um, right. going on in the parking big. lot. So, and so I think that's kind of what inspired me to, to say yes to kind of take it on um and you know the, the fall, fall festival i feel like is still a big deal but i i just want to kind of be a part of that just to help you know help keep it going help um help make it you know thrive it has as it has been um and so i think that's why i agreed um to take it on um as far as next year um I think I still have, I'm still a little bit in training. It's, it's so much work to do, but um, I'm, you know, even at the end of this year, after I said I was tired and I, I don't know if I want to do this again. And then immediately I start thinking of new ideas and how to improve or what we can do. So I, I think I probably will be as involved again next year. I guess I can't really get well, away. You're, you're right. It's, it's kind of like, um, in a way it's kind of like a little bug or uh I won't say a cold because generally people think of that in a bad sense, but yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's the building of a great habit, right? A building yeah. of a great habit that you don't have to do all by yourself. You actually have the whole community and the, those people who are, um, you know, very involved or know or how to spot, you know, talent really well of those people who are mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, like I know that I, I've seen you before or you've helped out on this is 
would you mind, you know, maybe sharing some of your time, talent, or treasure, you know, in this, right? right? And it it will grow. So in a couple of years, logistically, the, you know, we could have something bigger where, hey, it's a multi-day event and there's, we could fund it, sponsor it and all that good stuff. So it, but the big thing is it's great leadership of those who understand, you know, the, the community and the, the campus and the people, the people really well, where they, um, they find some value in, you know, reinvesting back into, you know, into themselves and also in the campus. You, you mentioned earlier that you're obviously you're the main coordinator for, you know, the confirmation students and young adults. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we like to add value and actually, you know, give, give some, you know, insight to, you know, what people and, you know, what the youth can look forward to. So, for example, are there any current programs that you're trying to grow or build even now more than ever, right, with, with those who are in high school or who just get right. out of high school? There's so many more activities and things and ambitions. Being an adult yourself, you know, you see where all of that still can go on, but have that be anchored with, with your faith right in the center, um, you know, can you can you share with the listeners and the audience, you know, either some programs or some initiatives or, you know, certain things you're you're trying to to build or, you know, or, you know, re, I guess, reinvest um, and get people to buy it back into? Yeah, uh, well, definitely. Um, we have our youth group, which meets uh, every second and fourth Friday from five to seven, um, sometimes in the Collier Center or in the youth room, which is actually located uh, right by the kindergarten and the chapel and the parish mm-hmm. office. Um, so it's for high schoolers, um, you know, ninth to twelfth grade. Um, sometimes some eighth graders who are siblings or friends of the high schoolers come in, which you know that's fine. I, you know, welcome them as well. Um, usually after they graduate high school, I try to kick them out so they can go to young adults so that they don't mm-hmm. get stuck within that high school setting. Uh, but right. with the youth group, we do a lot of different things. Um, we usually have uh, sometimes different faith topics where we'll have activities or discussions, um, sometimes games, sometimes movie nights. And uh, like you said, it's very, um, it's very faith-centered. So what I want you know, the youth to know is that, you know, you can have fun and you can do all these things and it's okay to talk about God and it's okay to actually pray and have a good time at the same time. So, you know, it's not one or the other. It's not like if we're having fun, we have to kick God out. It's, you can do both. And so I I try to, you know, always welcome them. Um, I always promote it to our confirmation students, to um, to maybe students who have been confirmed already or um, or even just for the youth who are involved to just bring their friends. And, you know, if they bring their friends, they don't have to be Catholic or they don't have to specifically be Christian or believe in God as long as they understand that um, that we will be keep everything faith-centered and Christ-centered and that we will be praying. And so even if they're not Catholic, as long as they just respect uh, the things that we do, you know, everyone is welcome to join us. And then, um, you know, after they graduate high school, when I kick them over to young adults, young adults, actually, it's a pretty large age range. It's from 18 to 39-ish. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's kind of a large gap, and there's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different life, life stages, you know, in that whole, in that whole gamut. So um, what we're trying to do now is we do have, um, we do always meet every third Friday of the month. We'll always mm-hmm. go to the 7 p.m. Novena Mass, and then afterwards we'll have uh, we'll have different themed meetings. So, a little similar to youth group, we may have um, we may have different faith topics where uh, mm-hmm. someone might present something. We'll have some discussion, or maybe um, it might be a prayer service. It might be might be movies, might be games. Uh, this past Friday, uh, we're so excited. This is the first time we've ever done this, but we did a uh, a wine and paint night. Oh, so cool. it's like this, yeah, those things that you see um, out there, and we have um, we have two young adults, uh, young adult friends from other parishes who are mm-hmm. amazing artists, and so they came together and they helped um, you know kind of like instruct uh, a certain painting. It was a it's a stained glass cross, and okay. um, and we had some wine for those who are of age, and we kind of mm-hmm. just you know just enjoyed and learned how to paint even if some of us couldn't paint it was kind of hard (laughs) but it was just fun you know to be able to do and you know it's them sharing their own talents with everyone else and kind of just fellowshipping together um trying to 
if we have the talent or if we don't work on it. <laughs> and um, so for whoever is between those ages, um, if you're out of high school, um, for those who just got out of college or maybe moving back home, you know, we try to kind of have like a place, like I said, or like a home for everyone and not just so that um, they're comfortable there so that they could also find their place in the parish. So what we also want to do is help them, you know, maybe get involved in a ministry, be a, be a Eucharistic minister or join the choir or, you know, kind of find their own, um, their own way around St. Michael's just to make it their own. So I think that's the, you know, our biggest purpose. So, uh, so really, you know, we always invite the, invite everyone out, whoever wants to join us. It's all, you know, it's always, everyone's welcome. Um, and it's also a really great way to, you know, just meet people and make friends because we get really, uh, we do stay close to the diocese. So other diocesan events through other parishes, um, we, we do attend. And so it's a great way to, um, it's also a good, I guess, network, networking um, through, through your own faith. So like we said, everything is still centered around um, our love for God and our love for Christ. And so we try to do all that. That's cool. That's very cool. As I, well, I, I have a, uh, I'm on break up here at the oh. at work, and we have the, the, Air, the Marine Corps base or the Navy base, so we always have planes flying above us. All right, cool. Oh. Um, I'm definitely <laughs> okay. gonna leave that in for editing, so that that will okay. definitely be fun, right? That's that's good old uh, home San Diego, California for you. I, I don't think. Uh, we we uh, get to give you know the campus and all the people you know enough credit right because mm-hmm. there's so uh, there's so many things where just like when you leave say if you leave the preschool or you leave the academy or if you have to move away from campus because you get restationed maybe you're in the military or you have to re- relocate for work or other you know uh, personal events that happen in your life the the one thing I know Miss Johnson and a lot of campuses are really really big on is when you come here no matter what the situation is. When you're here, you're home, right? She has, she has this big saying. You embody that, right, in explaining a lot of the, um, you know, the the events that you get to lead or that you get to coordinate along with another, you know, with with, you know, leaders in your group, right? Of uh, having that inclusion, that empathy, that love for, um, you know, just having fellowship. You know, obviously having our faith mm-hmm. be there. But even if you're you're not there, um, you know, you're you may be of a different faith or belief. Uh, just showing that example of respect and love, you know, that we try to echo at the Academy and just as people. The work that you're doing, Arla, is amazing with with our youth um, in our young adult groups and just being a great role model where you, you um, the stuff that you, you help teach on and you lead um, isn't just some theory that comes from a textbook, right? It comes from mm-hmm. real life. You having to go grow up as a student, have faith, um, be at the center as you grow up and have gone through life, and now you're actually helping and leading and empowering other youth, um, you know, to do the same thing, and most importantly, find their their true calling, right? Find, find themselves uh, with these different tools and avenues and programs, you know, to do that. Not just on a once a time, once a year basis, right? You're actually you have different things set up where you know on a weekly, monthly, and at different levels, because obviously we're all people and we're all at different stages in our lives and you know, you're you're just leading the way. Um, so I wanted to, uh, on behalf of the whole St. Michael community and especially the Academy, I wanted to, to thank you for not only being a student um, and a great um, facilitator and everything, but also being a great role model, you know, uh, to to our youth. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you, Mark. I, It's, uh, what do we say? It's all for, you know, it's all for the glory of God. So it's nothing for me. But I'm I'm so I feel so blessed just to be doing it. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, great. Um, you know, if uh, for those listeners who are hearing this, um, we're gonna actually be uh, putting this out in the near future. So, if mm-hmm. you're listening to this and it's Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving <laughs> to you and your family. Hopefully, you're you're have you know being safe. And if you're replaying this amazing episode because Arla's story and her family. And everything that she's doing, along with the whole team of uh, you know young adults and youth and high schoolers and everyone that she interacts with and works with. If you're listening to this during Christmas because there's, you're tired of reruns and everything on the radio or on TV or on Netflix, etc., please, if you find value in this, 
share this with someone that you that you know who would find value in this and sh- share this on the podcast. We, we have it on our website, um, in iTunes, and all the other uh, you know major podcast directories there because you know a lot of things that we're going to be showcasing are not just current students or past students. Uh, but actual, you know, people in the community making a difference. And if you um, can really believe in what she's doing right now and where she's going to help bring value and help grow the campus even more, we'd love for you to hear about it um, even more. So please subscribe. And if you find extra little moment, don't be a stranger and go ahead and leave us a review in iTunes. We'd be more than happy to share that. And we always love hearing the feedback. So Arlo, once again, thank you so much for all that you do for the whole campus and the parish and everything, you know, Father Manny and everybody and Miss Johnson and the whole academy and Miss Lucy and the preschool, we're all very thankful for, you know, all your efforts and your time, talent, and treasure that you share with us. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Mark. Thanks again for listening to another episode of the SMA Audio Experience podcast brought to you by St. Michael San Diego's technology, and social media team. For more information, go ahead and visit our website at www.smasandiego.org. On Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, we use the common handle or username of SMA San Diego. So you can definitely reach out to us there, leave a tweet, a message, a post, a comment. Uh, We'll be happy to engage with you, answer all your questions, and really join in part of sharing the St. Michael San Diego story on social media and on the internet and also via the podcast. So thanks again for listening. Take care and we'll hear you next week.